Hey, how are we doing out there, everybody? So, uh, we are at our third week now. Um, as of you all seeing the video here, narrative essays are turned in. You'd expect a two-week turnaround for essays, because um, it's a lot to read, and I, I do try to leave a comment or two. Um, my comments on your papers aren't going to be exhaustive, uh, just because of the volume of papers that I have to read. I will give you a few, uh, not to say surface level comments, but general comments, let's say. And uh, you have a rubric on the basis of content, uh, language use, format, and structure. Uh, and each of those categories is 25 points, 100 points uh, times those four categories, 25 times 400. Um, so it's my hope that the comments and your rubric score kind of fill you in on, you know, what you might want to work on for next time. You could always email me if you want further explanation. But those will start rolling back within a couple weeks. Uh, other things to note, if you don't do an assignment, okay, and the grading period is closed, it's a zero, okay? Unless you've made some prior arrangement with me or you've reached out to me and we've talked about extenuating circumstances, before the fact, okay? Now, there are always exceptions to the rule, of course, but I'm not gonna be reopening the course uh, for individual uh, students, the vast minority of, uh, it, it is the vast minority of students who don't complete the exercises, so it would be unfair to slow us all down uh, for just those few people. So just, uh, you know, make sure you're keeping up. Everything you need to know is in the announcement and if there's an, a, a companion video which is every other week in the video but really the announcement the weekly announcement should tell you everything um, we are now in shell two week three uh, two exercises two things to do by next Sunday are one um, in the textbook uh, remember that's successful college composition which we abbreviate as SCC you're in chapter three, modes of discourse, part two, which is description. Okay, so we did a narrative unit, did a narrative essay. Now we're gonna do a descriptive unit on description uh, writing, appealing to the five senses, sight, taste, touch, smell, etc., cetera, um, to make your subject, you know, pop off the page, so to speak, okay? Uh, so we're not so much concerned with storytelling, although we can still incorporate those narrative elements in descriptive writing, but it's a matter of focus. We're now focused on uh, colorful, vivid language uh, to help our uh, subject, whatever it is we're writing about, uh, come to life. Um, so the exercises in SCC, uh, they give you various settings or scenarios and ask you to offer a description, okay? And just make sure you read the directions carefully because um, unless they specify, you know, write a paragraph for each one of these things, I would just incorporate all of those different settings. I think one's the, you know, train station, nighttime. Uh, I would try to work all of those into a single paragraph, okay, depending on what the exercise is. So we're looking at exercises four and five. I'm just going to navigate there while I am on the subject. We'll go to chapter three, modes of discourse, part two, description. Exercise four, describe the following five items in a short paragraph. Use at least three of the five senses for each description. Okay, so they give you a list of five items, night, beach, city, dinner, stranger. You pick three of those and incorporate those three things into a single paragraph. So let's say you pick night, beach, and city. You don't have to write a paragraph for night, a paragraph for beach, a paragraph for city. Incorporate them all in a single cohesive paragraph. Okay, so it can be like nighttime at the beach that is right outside the city. Okay, that's kind of a way to conceive of how to unify these three things together, okay? Three of the five senses, so taste, touch, smell, hearing, etc. Um, pick three of those and, you know, use vivid language uh, 
you know, using figurative language, similes, metaphors that can help writing come to life. Uh, you've probably always heard of show, don't tell. That's generally true uh, in most cases when we're talking about uh, writing in, in this capacity. Um, so instead of saying uh, the pizza was good or the pizza tasted good, that's telling you how it tasted, but to show you how it tasted, I would need to make comparisons, use a simile or metaphor. The pizza tasted, you know, as though, you know, a volcano party were dancing on my tongue. I, I don't know if that's off the cuff, unprepared remarks there, but you see what I'm saying. You know, using that kind of colorful figurative language elevates what you're saying versus the pizza was good, okay? Um, so let your creativity flow there. A separate sheet of paper, just separate page on your document. Uh, exercise five, choose an organizing strategy executed in a short paragraph for three of the following six items. So they give you a train station, coffee shop, etc. So an organizing strategy, where do we start, okay? Perhaps we start disembarking from the train at the train station, okay? We get in our car, we drive to the coffee shop, okay? So that is a way to organize in a single paragraph kind of the flow of ideas within this little mini scene you're creating here, okay? Uh, or however you want to do it. You're in the lobby of a movie theater. The movie has just left out. You and your friend get in your car and go to the train station for whatever reason, okay? So two paragraphs, one exercise four. You pick three of those five items, or all five items, I'm sorry. Describe all five items, exercise four, in a short paragraph. Use at least three of the five senses, okay? Then exercise five, you pick three of the following six and see how you want to pattern those things and make them come together. Uh, train station, office, car, coffee shop, etc. Okay, so just four and five, then the two things to read um, in the reader, in the descriptive unit in the reader. Uh, one essay called Goodbye to My Twinkie Days, and then one called Once More to the Lake, which was written by E.B. White, who himself wrote Stuart Little and uh, Charlotte's Webb. And uh, the two reader articles, if you can't access them from the reader, I've provided links for you in the announcement for this week, okay? So the discussion questions, you'll see DQ uh, attached underneath the assignment link. You just open that, and there's a discussion question for uh, each piece. Only two pieces you have to read from there. Uh, and then the only other thing is a blog. So blogs are voluntary. You don't have to do them. They're little reflective uh, prompts, kind of like the journals, but the journals are compulsory. You do have to do them if you want to earn credit. Blogs, though, are voluntary. You don't have to do them, but if you do them, um, each time you do a blog, I will record that as bonus points for your MLA research essay. So it does behoove you to do the blog. I think this week I just asked uh, what piece from the narrative unit, so that's the George Orwell piece and the uh, Bonnie Smith Yackel piece. Uh, so Shooting an Elephant, My Mother Never Worked, which do you find more appealing, which do you prefer, and why? Okay. So if you want to answer that in the blog uh, folder, uh, extra credit on your research essay. Okay. Uh, anything else to think about or to say? Uh, just constant reminder, it's crucial in an online course to follow along. The announcements are your guide, tell you where to go, what to do. Uh, course videos every other week. This is uh, one of those weeks. Any questions, feel free to reach out via email. You guys probably figure out that I'm pretty prompt at turning them around to you overall. Kind of got off to a rocky start in the beginning there because uh, I was having trouble accessing my email account from my phone, uh, but I got that all figured out now. So with that said, I think that is going to do it for us this week. 
Uh, have a good week, and um, talk to you again soon. Bye. Peace.